Hey everyone, it's Angela from abpan.com and July 4th is coming soon and in America that means it is fireworks time. So I just thought I would give you some quick tips on how I photographed fireworks in the past. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the equipment you need. The first thing that you will need is your camera. This is a DSLR, it's a Canon 5D Mark II, but you won't necessarily need an SLR. You just need a camera that has a function called bulb and that is usually represented by a B. And the second thing that you will need is a camera release. And this just hooks right into my 5D Mark II. And I like this remote because you can actually push down the, the button and it will hold down the shutter for as long as you want. So you don't have to keep on pressing it the whole time. It's just a really easy to use camera release. And the last thing that you definitely need is a tripod. I know a lot of people don't like carrying it around, but you will definitely need a tripod, especially since it's the fireworks, you're outside at night, and you're gonna be taking those long exposure shots and you need to keep your camera steady, so you definitely need a tripod. So like I was saying before, you need a camera that has a B setting, that stands for bulb. What that means is that you can hold down the shutter for as long as you want, and you don't actually have to time it, you can actually time it when the fireworks go up. So let me explain how I do this. Let me explain some of my exposure settings. So you first thing you want to do is keep your ISO low. I would maybe try it at 100, 125, or 200, but I would try not to go more than 400 because you don't want it to have a lot of, you don't want your picture to have a lot of noise. Even though it's a night shot and it's going to be dark, the fireworks are so bright that you'll be surprised that you don't need a very high ISO. So definitely keep your ISO low. And then your shutter speed is at bulb and you will be manually doing that with your camera release or your shutter release. And then for the aperture, in the past I've kept it at 5.6 and I've had no problems with that. But I would recommend to keep it somewhere in the middle. I wouldn't go all the way down to like 2.8 or and I wouldn't go up to f22 either. So those settings are a little extreme. I would try to keep it in the middle. 5.6 is a little bit big but maybe you could try f8 or f11 the smallest i would go would be f16 i think so don't go anything above f16 or below f16 so let's talk about the bulb setting like i said before you set your camera on b and then you use your shutter release to to time your shots now this is the tricky part to know how long to hold it open for and to know when to start and know when to end. So like I said before, even though these are night shots, it does get really bright with the fireworks. So in the past, I usually wait for the fireworks to go up in the air and right before they're about to explode. Because you know how you can kind of see that little trail going up in the sky? You want to wait for it's like kind of already in the sky and about to explode and that's when I'll press the shutter release. So once all the fireworks are all up in the sky, my shutter release is already open, I'll wait till they're about to fall and they're about to disappear into smoke. So right before they're about to open, I open the shutter release. And right before they're about to close, I'll close the shutter speed. And so hopefully before July 4th, you'll be able to practice on some fireworks because it's kind of like a a movement with the fireworks. You're watching the fireworks go up, you're watching the fireworks go down, and that's when you're pressing your shutter release. So if you can, I would practice before July 4th as well, before the big show. So you can get some practice shots in and kind of judge how long to keep it open. for. Your, so you can judge for yourself how long to keep it open, how long to close it. It's definitely something that you need to practice before the big show just so you don't walk away with nothing and so you don't have to wait till next year to take more fireworks pictures. So those are your camera settings and all the equipment that you need for the shot. But first I would say that you should definitely go ahead and scout out the location that you want to go to. I've done this every year in the past. I've gone probably July 3rd to go see where I wanted to go stand, make sure I get my spot. Um, kind of estimate if there would be a lot of people there and try to plan out how I was going to set up my camera, maybe take a few test shots for the next day just so I can get a better idea of where I want to go because July 4th in DC is pretty crowded so you definitely want to be as prepared as you can be and I don't know where you live but I'm assuming fireworks anywhere 
pretty much it's really crowded so <laughs> definitely plan your shots go ahead of time plan where you want to go how you want to sit you know just make sure to be prepared and bring lots of water because it's hot July 4th <laughs> so I haven't tried this before but I saw someone suggest that if you want to take a shot with multiple fireworks in your pictures you may want to take some foam core with you so you know how fireworks go up this way and the fireworks go up this way and the fireworks go up this way so when one firework goes up you open your shutter and then when it's about to disappear you take that black foam core and you cover your lens and once that is covered you wait for the next firework to come and you open it up again close it when it goes away so i don't know how well that technique works in theory it sounds like it will work well so I haven't tried that before, but if you try it, let me know how it goes, and hopefully this year I'll be able to try it. So those were just some of my fireworks tips, and I hope you guys have a great July 4th, or if you have any other fireworks celebrations, let me know, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Visual story. Uh, create the visual structure of film, TV, and digital media by Bruce Block. And